Happy Monday, people. Welcome to the Tri Coaching YouTube. As athletes and coaches, 2020 was a bit of a washout. You know, whether we were competing, whether we had goals in mind, it doesn't matter. Whether it was your first triathlon, your 10th Ironman, you know, set, trying to set particular PBs, even if you were trying to compete as an age grouper, everything has been postponed and cancelled. And we've all had it. You know, I had races cancelled. I had goals that just couldn't happen because of the pandemic. You know, goals are left in tatters. And it probably made you a bit uncertain about what 2021 is going to bring. You know, we still don't know what races are going to run, where they might be. So motivation can be a real struggle. And uncertainty plays with your mind. You know, pandemic has really meant that there are real hardships and the stresses around both physical and mental it's not a surprise that people are struggling. So it's not a surprise people are having down days. But it is possible to find ways to brighten your days up, to get that motivation, to go out and train, um, things to work for. And it just means that if we can do something now, when the pandemic lifts, when lockdowns lift, when races happen, we'll be in a better position to restart. Here are a few things that might help you find a little bit of perspective and a little bit of motivation for the year. So number one, acknowledge your frustrations, the pain, the grief, the loss. You know, it's OK to be stressed and to be OK with it is a skill. You know, it's something we have to practice. We've all lost something and for everybody, that pain will be a little bit different. But it's good to talk talk to a coach you know i've been talking to my athletes throughout the last year about their stresses talk to your training partner you know you've got the same or similar goals in mind talk to your loved ones if they're a good listener um maybe not someone you're locked in with 24 7 because they're probably fed up with you being a bit grumpy and a bit grouchy because they've probably got the same stresses themselves but remember that it's good to appreciate exactly where you're at. Number two, these problems can be reframed as opportunities. Now, I'm not saying that we go, everything is going to be hunky dory and everything's going to be amazing. You know, we don't have to be relentlessly positive. But what we can do is take the best from every situation. You know, the universe doesn't work on the basis that everything happens for a reason. But those reasons these things happen and so what we can do is make the most of it for ourselves and go forward from that maybe you've taken the rest maybe you've taken the time to have a proper break you know got rid of those chronic injuries those niggles and those pains because actually you weren't prepared to have a rest now because there's no racing you had no motivation so you've stopped and nothing hurts. And that's a great thing. Maybe you've taken the time because you're on furlough, which is a pain, but you've got this extra time. So you've been able to consistently train. Or maybe you've been able to do that strength training that you've always been putting off. Number three, we're going to broaden your goals. Give yourself a bit of a wider scope with any entries or any thoughts or any goals that you enter. You might have a virtual marathon planned or maybe in person, fingers crossed, but a virtual marathon plan for later in the year. And rather than going, right, I'm going to try and go sub 345 or 330 or four hours, whatever it is, hell for leather, and then being disappointed if it doesn't happen for whatever reason that may be, give yourself three targets. Entry level, bronze level, bronze medal goal, whatever you like, is finishing. Because especially if you haven't done a marathon or if you're used to doing longer distance events you know that anything can happen second goal maybe you're going to aim for sub four hours or sub 430 you know it's it's something that you could do it needs to go well enough but you should be comfortable to do it and then maybe your gold level target your gold medal target 
is to try to say, right, if everything goes really well, my stretch target, you know, my dream goal is to run 345 or 330 or whatever that is. But by having that sliding scale of goals, you can get something from that event, no matter what happens. And that nuance gives you space to take the little wins. You know, we want to take wins from everything. No matter how bad the situation, it's going, okay, this was shit. This was rubbish. This was awful. But, you know, I've stuck to my plan. Or my technique was good. Or my fitness was great, but just the speed wasn't there. It gives you that ability to take those wins as well as being, it's okay to be a bit pissed off with it. Use this time, this pandemic, to do something different. If you're someone who is used to plowing away on the turbo, maybe that's out of convenience, that's, maybe that's out of fun, but maybe take to the roads a little bit more. Or if you've got a mountain bike, get out on the, mount, on the trails and get in the mud. Or vice versa, if you're someone who likes riding on the road a lot, maybe try riding on, your, on, the, on the turbo a little bit. Maybe if you're a road runner and you go pound the streets all the time, maybe go and run on the trails. You know, go and find somewhere new. Maybe if you're someone who hides your goals inside, you don't like telling people for fear of letting people down or for the stress that it gives, maybe tell one person, tell one of your training partners or tell a loved one so they know where you're at and they can hold you accountable. And if you're someone who tells everybody because that sparks your interest and that sparks your motivation, keep it internal. Try and keep one or two goals for secret. That's your secret weapon. By doing something different, it sparks a bit of newness and that newness gives a bit of excitement and motivation. That doesn't necessarily mean that that excitement's because you're absolutely amazing at it, maybe trying like mountain biking or something, but because it's different, it's challenging you. And that challenge is what we need. Number five, you know, think about embracing gratitude, embracing the grind, embracing going out and being consistent. Some of the best athletes or the best athletes get by, not because they have amazing workouts every single day, but because they're consistent every time. And yes, some days it feels mundane. But these guys and girls, or ladies and gents, they take the joy in that mundane. They find things to be grateful for, you know. Being grateful to be able to go out and train every day, it's, it's a gift for all of us. You know, we're lucky to have our health. We're lucky to have our fitness. We're lucky to be able to go and ride your bike or go for a run or do some strength work. And being grateful for that, I mean, being grateful for anything, it, it's experiencing a real glow up at the moment. You know, people are really extolling the virtues of being grateful. And it and it's true, you know, these things, being grateful for things allows you to see more positive. It allows you to see more light. And that's what we all need right now. So every day, try and find something you can be grateful for. Whether that's being a little bit stronger whilst you're out running. Or maybe it's being able to get away from your desk, from home learning, and go and get some fresh air and run and enjoy the sunshine. Or maybe it's being able to wear your new kit, which felt nice and, and made you feel good, but being grateful for that. It's being finding joy in something, no matter how small, just to bring that training alive for you. Number six, set goals with things that you wouldn't normally set targets with. Maybe it's thinking about that strength, you know, being able to do more press ups if you haven't got any home stuff, home strength stuff at home. You know, you could do plenty of strength work at home without any kit. You don't need anything special. Maybe you could set goals with transition, especially as we come towards the summer. You could set yourself up a mini transition up outside your house or in your back garden or whatever, meaning that you can play around with things. And if you're keeping fit, if you're keeping healthy, you're keeping strong, and your transitions get quicker and smoother, then your overall racing becomes less stressed. It becomes smooth, smoother, more fluid. You carry more speed from your swim to your bike, your bike to your run. And 
it's all about doing something different, something that you wouldn't normally practice. Number seven, treat your virtual races as A races. You know, if you're not sure when you might get to do your, your, your triathlon or your duathlon or your marathon, who's to say you can't do a virtual race as your A race for the year? Ironman did a whole thing, a whole series of races last year of virtual events, and it gave people stuff to train for. Zwift does virtual races, and you could pick a race, one race a month, or a particular race that you're going to have as your A race. And you can set yourself a taper, or with your coach, you set yourself a taper up to that race. So you hit it in exactly the same way you would as in, in person. You can make sure you eat properly on the way up, on the lead up to it. You can make sure you set up your nutrition for during the day, during the day, during the race, as you would do in person. So many organisers are doing virtual races now. People like the Castle Events and DB Max, and even now there's an app called Compete Impossible where you can set up your own races. So if you've got club mates that you want to set up an event, whether it's a virtual 5K or a virtual duathlon of your own distance and choosing, you can set it up. You might even choose to commemorate it with uh, a medal or a t-shirt, you know, especially if you're doing it as a group, because some people like that as, a, as part of an air event. You know, that's why some people race. So you can make it really special, but set it up. Why not choose that virtual race as your A race for the year? So you've got something to train for. And I suppose the final point I have for motivation is reward that success. And that comes off the back of that last point about virtual racing. You know, you might do a virtual race and decide to buy yourself a medal or a T-shirt to commemorate doing those races. And as cheesy as that might sound to some people, that might sound like an amazing idea to others. For other people, rewarding that success, that might be having a takeaway once a week or buying a new bit of kit to... Um, celebrate having been training regularly or maybe it's saying right well when the pandemic's over because I've done this regular training I can justify going and having a nice week away on holiday reward yourself be kind to yourself and if you feel kind to yourself you're more inclined more likely more inclined to go and do those things that will make you feel better all these things will help in individual bits here and there for different people Play around with it. And if you've got any questions, ping me a message. That's what I'm here for. I'm a coach. I'm an athlete. I've had my down days. I'm working on ways that I can keep myself motivated. And we'll all benefit in different ways. But hopefully some of that's been useful. If you've got any comments, leave them below. Click subscribe. Click link. Click, click like. Uh, and if you've found it useful, share it with your friends. And uh, I'll see you next time.